Hey guys, it's Aaron. Later on this week, we have another 3D Basecamp session coming out. This time about 3D scanning. It includes Mitch Stangle from Stangle Associates and Dave Berzik from Trimble. They go into all kinds of detail on working with 3D scans, and it's actually part of an interactive session where people went off and did some scanning. That part's not in the video. That was cut out. But it was a cool exploration of what can be done with 3D scans. Now, in this video, I played with the idea of importing a 3D scan, that sort of thing, but it really ended up being a workflow that included some extensions and outside software, and it really wasn't something that I could make an impactful session on in, in the time we have for a skill builder. But one of the things that one of the guys from Stangle Associates talked about was how they use SketchUp to create kind of preliminary model sets where, where they snap to the, the scan, but they're not real worried about specific dimensions. And that got me thinking, what would I do in SketchUp if I wanted to just go in and literally super quick mock something up where I was concerned about the dimensions, but not enough where I needed it to be like 16, 16th inch accuracy or anything like that. So I started thinking about this doing a, what I would call a, uh, low quality conceptual model. And let me show you what I think when I think of that concept. So let's hop in. Most of this comes down to setting model information. So if I come in here to my window and go to model info, this of course is gonna show me the information about this specific model. This is not a preset. This is not part of your settings or anything like that. This is specific to this model. And if I go to units, here's what I'll look at is in units. First thing, I don't want my precision to be this small. Of course, this isn't that small. It can go quite a bit smaller, but I'm gonna start by taking my units all the way up to zero inches. And then I'm gonna turn on enable length snapping to 12 inches, which is a foot. Um, I'm gonna actually change this too. Let's, let's see what happens when we snap to 45 degrees. So nice big dimensions is really what I'm looking at here. Um, I'm also gonna turn on force display of zero inches. Um, so this means we're gonna be working basically snapping to real big numbers or at least nice big round numbers. So let me show you what this means. So if I come in here with a rectangle right now, I'm gonna click on my origin and I'm gonna start dragging out. Look at my coordinates in the lower right corner now. I'm jumping to even one foot dimensions. So if I wanted to make, say, I'll make a, I'll make a little house here and I want it to be 15 feet by 20 feet, I can real easily come over and just slide to that dimension and click. So it's important to note that this is not a grid. So right now I could start this new rectangle anywhere. I'm not actually on a grid, but when I pick it wherever that is, from that point, I'm gonna be jumping one foot increments. This doesn't work just for drawing, it works for the other tools too. So if I go to push pull and click, and now move my mouse up, you can see it jumping, boom, 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 one foot at a time. So I'm gonna take that up 10 feet and click. Now this is nice because I don't have to worry about using the keyboard in this case unless I ever come off of this even one foot dimension. So let's say I wanna put a door, I'm gonna put a, a seven foot, a four, four by seven door, nice big door on the front here. I'm gonna grab my rectangle and I'm gonna go find the midpoint I'm gonna click my modify key, option or control to snap to the center. And what I can do then is I can draw, again, there I am snapping those dimensions. So four feet wide. And since I'm drawing from the center, I'm actually drawing this 14 feet tall and click, just erase this lower half and then use push pull to push that in. Well, we'll push it in one foot since that's what my snap set to. I can do the same thing to draw a window. I could come up Here's my, uh, or actually we'll start over here. I could come across one, two feet, click. I'll come all the way up to seven feet, same header height as my door. I will come over three feet. And let's drop down four feet, come back, delete this, and then double click to push that in a foot two. 
And then we'll grab this. We'll grab that window and we'll move it. Um, and we'll just, since we're on this one foot grid, I'm gonna hit the modifier key to make a copy and just pull it straight over so that I'm the same distance away on that end. Now, something to notice. When I start moving around, I'm moving at this weird dimension. I'm not actually, again, not on a grid, but I'm moving, in this case, 13 feet away from the original point, but I'm along some weird line that's off in a strange spot. So this is a, a, another thing I want to do when I'm doing this kind of conceptual modeling is make sure that I stick to my inferences. So I'm going to stay on the red line and come straight across. And there we go. That's all, all one foot blocks, basically, is what I'm drawing with. Let's go to the roof here. Let's, let's, uh, let's tip this roof up. I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to go to Rotate. And first thing I want to show is look at, my, uh, look at my Rotate gizmo there. See how few tick marks there are on there? I only have tick marks on there at 45 degrees. So if I'm going to take this shape and put it up to 45, I'm going to click right here, Modifier key to copy, and I'm going to snap, boom, right there to 45 degrees. I'll do the same thing with the other one. And then maybe I'll just draw a quick line here to intersect the two, and I can delete these extra pieces off. And then I'll go ahead and close that up. I can use offset to come over here, and uh, I'm going to draw my overhang in real quick by offsetting these two. Offset's going to behave a little bit differently. Offset doesn't snap the way the other tools do. So in this case, I'm going to have to put in a reference line to snap to. So if I click and draw a line to this edge, and then I draw perpendicular, so on the, on the magenta axes, and come in here, it's going to snap to one foot. Now I can grab these lines, offset. That's my even one foot. Just go ahead and extend these down. and push pull this out, guess how far? One foot. And I can take this shape then and just copy that down to the other side. Get rid of these extra lines. One foot. Orient faces reverse that. Last thing I'll do here, I'll extend this piece down and in this case, I'm just going to create a shape that I can push-pull across the front here. And I can click right here, use this as a reference, and guess whether it's going to snap to? One foot. Same thing here. And then I can push that over to here. And having done all of that, again, didn't touch the keyboard once, other than some shortcut keys. I didn't type a single number, I should say. I can grab my dimensions right now, and I'll see where these even one-foot dimensions. So there you go. That change can be a nice option to have, uh, another tool in your arsenal to make it quick and easy to do that conceptual massing without having to worry about odd dimensions here and there or having to use your keyboard to put in exact dimensions if you want to stay to round numbers. Hopefully that helps you. If so, Give us a like. If you want to see more videos like this or be notified when the video comes out on 3D Scanning this Friday, go ahead and subscribe down below. Most importantly, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think or if you have some ideas that you think would make good skill builders. We like making these videos. We like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.